Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture, lecture number 45, called What We Should Do So That the Practices Give Positive Results. So, today we are going to study this topic because everything we've seen in this course is practical. So, the fundamental thing is learning to do the practices correctly and have success with them. Many of us maybe are not getting good results in the practices, such as astral unfolding or meditation. So, for this reason, it's very necessary this conference in the course, so that we can have very clear the elements that can lead us to failure when we try to do any one of the practices. Uh, let us remember that this course is totally practical, that when we reach this knowledge, two paths open to us, the path of the practitioner and the path of the believer. Let us remember that only practice leads us to direct experimentation and to see the progress and results of our inner work. Only practice allows us to obtain real spiritual advances based on direct experimentation. Hence, the importance that we practice what we have learned along the course. We can achieve success in all the practices we see here, and all of them give positive results. But it's very important that we get to do the practice in the correct state of mind that is required for it. So, let's study the first aspect of failure, which is lack of concentration. Normally, most people do not give the importance it deserves to the concentration. Concentration is a wonderful, a wonderful power. We are concentrated when consciousness is centered in the action. If our consciousness is our particular God, we should know that it will never fail. When we focus our consciousness in what we are doing and we do not get distracted, in fact, we are going to do it perfectly and achieve success. So concentration is the greatest power we can aspire to have. Maybe we can't see it yet, but later we will realize that it is the greatest power that can be developed by a man. A person uh, in concentration achieves wonderful things. You could, for example, walk through a stone, go inside and come out uh, on the other side of a wall and do many spectacular things, things that by now we may think that are impossible to do. So, the important thing would be to learn to focus consciousness on what we are doing. Um, it's serious that most human beings do not know how to concentrate. We believe that we concentrate because we carry out uh, certain tasks in an apparently judicious manner, but we are not really focused, we are not really centered. To achieve concentration, we must follow the following steps. We have to set a goal in our heart of what we are preparing to do. Then we have to inject the encouragement, uh, the encouragement, and then we have to start doing. We must practice psychological death to eliminate all the defects that appear and want to take us out of that state of concentration. Once the defect has been eliminated, we return to our heart and continue doing um, what we were doing in that state of concentration. If we want to start developing concentration, we have to start carrying out uh, a very simple task in the day in that state of concentration. Let's see what we do during the day. Think by think. It is very useful to write them down. Uh, the day we manage to do that thing with total concentration is going to be a success. The first things we should write down are the things of the consciousness, of course. For example, waking up, returning from the astral plane to the physical plane, and focusing the consciousness from that very moment to be able to remember all the dreams. And so we would remain every day waking up consciously and remembering what we did in the astral. The second task uh, would be to write down each one of the different dreams we had. Uh, third, uh, we sit up to get out of bed. Then we will check in which dimension we are to see if we are in the third or if we are still in the fifth dimension. In order to do that, um, we'll jump with the desire to float. 
Um, the fourth uh, will be to undress or go to the bathroom, get to the sink, take off our clothes, get in the shower, adjust the jet, make it hot, uh, turn off the shower door, soaping up, rinsing, drying off, and so on. We can't even imagine the number of tasks that we do each day, and all of them mechanically. We have to manage to do them consciously, concentrated, with our consciousness centered on what we are doing in each one of those instants, um, to be able to realize each one of the defects that intervene in each task of the day causing distraction. So, we have to fight every day from the moment we get up to be concentrated, to live in the moment, for not being distracted, for not allowing the consciousness to go for a walk who knows where, or falling asleep for good and spending the whole day like zombies, walking in the street, talking to people, fighting, arguing, asking prices, etc., etc. And at night, when we return to the house and we are asked, what did you do today? We answer, I don't know. And this is because we have been so asleep that we do not even remember what we have done during the day. When a person is already aware of each one of these steps, uh, when we take a bath, for example, we discover the elements that put us in conflict. We begin to realize why in daily life there are so many indecisions and other similar things. If we already have a program of activities for the day, we go to what we have to do and we do not allow any thought that have nothing to do with that task. For example, if we are doing task number three, we cannot be thinking about task um, number 12. We need to be uh, focused on the task we are carrying out now. If we are not living in the present uh, moment, we cannot be focused. The same thing happens when we are in task number 12 and we are thinking about a problem that occurred in a previous task. We are not living in the moment. In fact, uh, we are off center. When we do a task, concentrating on that task, it becomes simpler and smaller and it becomes very easy to make and even very pleasant. The, the more elementary task, like washing the coffee cups, feels very nice if we are concentrating because we are focused on what we are doing and the consciousness is manifesting. But what happens when the coffee cups are being washed? We discover that there are defects who say, oh, how fed up I am. I would, um, it would be better if someone else washed this. And an internal fight begins between the different defects that we have and that doesn't allow us to be concentrated. We need to realize that we have to apply the process of ongoing death to be eliminating those little details that are showing at, at the moment, okay? If we do not apply concentration to what we are doing, we are going to fail. This is also the cause of the accidents we have. Through self-observation, we realize there are tasks that we like and there are tasks that we dislike. The tasks that we like are done very quickly because we like them. But the tasks that we dislike, we always tend to postpone them. But why do we dislike a certain task? Maybe because we don't know how to do it. Uh, could it be that there are some defects that uh, hinder the development of that task? But when we are concentrated and the consciousness is acting, our being, who is wisdom, is going to be telling us how to do it. And we are going to start perfecting that task. And the day will come in which the most difficult task is going to be perfectly executed. Uh, we'll feel pleased because we uh, make it perfect. So we'll want uh, tasks to come and we'll become prepared to face difficult commitments. We need to pay attention to those words, I have to. In fact, there is a resistance there, an opposition, which makes the task difficult and unpleasant. But if we are aware, we discover that resistance and eliminate it. So that words change from I have to, um, to I want to. 
Then we discovered that being center is the most pleasant thing in the world. If you understand this and put concentration into practice, after a few years, you will know how to concentrate uh, perfectly on each task uh, you do. In other words, we are not saying that in a week, neither in a month, nor in a year, but through the struggle, sooner or later, we will know how to use concentration and no practice is going to fail. Also, if we take advantage of that concentration to beg the mother to eliminate each one of the little details that try to get us out of concentration, we will advance in psychological death a lot. Okay? Failure is due to distraction. Uh, when we get used to doing things without distraction, we'll always succeed. So now, now let's talk about the second aspect of failure, which is lack of faith. What is not having faith? To doubt. And doubting always leads us to failure. What is having faith then? Knowing, being certain. It is different to know than to believe. We can believe that we can do many things. For example, I can believe that I can fly, but if I haven't flown, I uh, uh, definitely won't fly. I can uh, stay all day flopping, uh, flopping and won't start to fly. But when I know how to fly, I start. That's where the difference is. So to have faith, we need to overcome something call, called doubt. And uh, what makes us uh, doubt is only one thing. Our mechanical imagination uh, always telling us, could it be? If we have all the steps to do a practice, as soon as we doubt whether we will take out that practice, we immediately begin to waver. This is what leads us to fail. We must start to work with some certainty. If we are told to do steps one, two, three, four, uh, four and five, so let's do steps one, two, three, four, and five and see what happens. And by the time we are doing it, we must be concentrated to identify what, uh, what affects each step and correct what we could be doing wrong. When we overcome a doubt, we start doing. Then wisdom arises and then comes faith in what we are doing. And we do not doubt never again. It is okay for a person who has not consciously unfolded to doubt about astral unfolding, but for a person who has already consciously unfolded, there is nothing to doubt. Well, the third aspect of failure is fear. Something that is very important for us to work on from now on is fear. Fear renders everyone powerless and incapable. When a person is afraid, cannot do. This is the force contrary to love, which is in the works. Immediately, the imagination puts fear into us. And if our fear is not resolved, uh, while the imagination does not solve, the will does not work. As long as we do not resolve our fears, we will not be able to unfold. We will not be able to meditate because the will will not work for that. It is important to understand that. We can also work our fears with psychological death, asking our mother to eliminate all the details of fear that are not uh, allowing us to do the practice. If we are trying to unfold, maybe we start uh, to imagine that something bad or diabolical is going to happen to us, that uh, something is going to possess um, our body, etc. We need to eliminate them all. For the wise to imagine is to see and to create. So we shouldn't let our defects take advantage of that faculty and use it in a mechanical way. We must eliminate those defects and consciously imagine how we achieve to unfold, for example. The fourth aspect of failure is um, a, a very important point, is the objective. That one who has a goal never fails. 
But when we have no objective, we become lazy and dizzy. For example, if I'm going to leave my house, but I don't know where I'm going, I'll start uh, going up and down. And then I get to the corner and have to decide to take one of the two roads, but I don't know whether to go north or south because I don't have a goal. I don't have a direction. I don't know where I'm going. When we say, I'm going tonight to investigate this, this, and this, uh, to speak with a certain master, go to a certain city, investigate a past life, um, find so-and-so, whatever, for a certain objective, there will always be uh, success because success is in the goal. So as soon as we unfold, we start uh, where we are going and we don't waste time. What is serious is to be out of their burden, not knowing where we are going or where we come from. Uh, we always have to have an objective. Go to court, for example, investigate how it is this business going, uh, make a transfer of funds, speak with a certain master, investigate a certain psychological aggregate, etc. We need to have a certain course, okay? For this reason, when we are doing the relaxation practice, we say, uh, what is the objective that uh, we are going to meet as soon as we unfold, okay? Uh, what is the, the object of, of going to look for a certain teacher? I have to know what I'm going to ask him, for example. Hopefully, the goal you have should be something you really want. Because here, you are going to put the emotion to work and the astral is related, is related to the emotion. So, that's going to help us a lot. So, we need to reflect on this so that we can uh, realize what we are failing in these four points. If it is missing concentration, if we don't have faith, if we find defects of fear, um, let's ask the mother to remove them from us. And finally, let's set ourselves a goal. This should not fail and we may start achieving success in all the practices we do, okay? Also, uh, there are four norms or steps in esoteric work. It's good for us to write them down and keep them in mind, okay? The first one is journeying. And what is journeying? Journeying is wishing. If we are going to unfold, we have to want to do it. First, you have to want, and wanting is wishing. And wishing is nothing more than imagining, okay? The second step is daring. What is daring? Starting to do. In other words, I'm going to unfold myself. It's the desire to unfold, right? But um, uh, to begin to unfold is to dare. To begin is to set to work with the will in something that we wish to do. Uh, the third one is doing. The one who begins to do at some point ends. This has a beginning and has an end. You begin to do a task because here you already started. And in a moment for another, you did it. But always remember that the one who does is the being, the consciousness, and the one who acts is the I. It is one thing to act and another thing to do. Here we are saying to do, which is of the being. So here is the will, and here is the doing, okay? The fourth is silence. You have to know that uh, here we think about uh, self-realization, and self-realization is opposite to speaking. It is learning to shut up, to be silent. So nobody can talk about what they see in the astral because either they stop seeing it or they become a black magician. But if the person knows how to keep quiet, every day uh, he will unfold, every day he will see, every day he will investigate, every day he will change, every day he will kill defects because he does things as they have to be done. Talking about our astrals, uh, what we see and what our and, and what our uh, being show us produces a karma called dark night in which we will not see or have conscious uh, astrals for a certain period of time. If we do not learn and continue doing so, that periods of time are going to get longer and even end up being for good. So remember that. 
And well, this being the lecture for today. Thank you very much for being here. See you in the next uh, uh, lecture called How to Control Nocturnal Emissions in Sexual Falls. We are going to study some aspects that prevent us from achieving perfect chastity. And we are going to learn some tools and practices that are going to help us a lot in that purpose. So thank you very much and bye-bye.